Okay, Graham from Coal Tool Centre. Under what circumstances would we need to cut gaskets with our laser machine? Mainly because we've either got a workshop where a guy is standing around looking for a gasket which are not available. We might be able to cut him a gasket for a nail gun. He then is, is in, back in action and with a workshop is um, working. Gaskets for compressors, maybe old models you can't get bits and pieces for and you have to, we've cut them. Once I've actually cut them, um, we can then save the gaskets into a format where we can have a, a silhouette and people can come along with a gasket and say, okay, that's the one we need, then we can cut them from, that, from our templates. The um, laser, 50 watt laser will kit, cut 1.5 or 0.8 millimeter gaskets. We wind her over, nothing happens. So she's dead. The reason we're standing in front of the forklift is because this is the latest instance why we had to cut a gasket and I'll go through the process of actually making up a gasket and cutting it. The fork itself stopped with one of the staff on it and it won't go. It just winds over and uh, nothing, no, won't, won't fire, fire, won't start, won't do anything. We went through, uh, it recently had a fuel pump replaced. We replaced, just as a matter of course, we replaced um, the filter and the, the fuel lines to see if there was an issue with that. That seems to be not a problem. We end up putting points, condenser and spark plugs in it, still won't go. We concentrated on the carburetor and found that the carburetor was flooding. On looking down the um, intake manifold, we see 20 millimetres of fuel sitting in the bottom of the manifold. So if things that rich, it will not start. Um, pulled the carburetor off, trying to chase parts. Unfortunately, parts are very difficult. It's a 1980 model forklift, so um, to get gaskets and that sort of stuff, we chased around south, waited for two days, and eventually come back and had no luck. So now we've decided, we pulled it apart, found a piece under the, under the needle and seat, said, okay, we'll get away with that. The intermediate gasket, which is a difficult one to cut, is okay, so we'll get away with that. We just need the top gaskets and the six gaskets in the lower plate. So I'll just run through the process of how we go about getting those into a computer and then cutting, draw, getting a drawing of them, then using that drawing to laser cut our, our pieces. Now we'll just continue on going to the computer and uh, show you what we have to do. Luckily we have a manifold which has all the basic shape for the bottom of the carburetor. What we basically do is get a reasonably sharp pin, we, we go around the out, inside, the holes and the outside and when we get to the others, so basically get a fairly close representation of what we're after. Get your manifold nice and clean so you don't want a really dirty piece of paper. We can flip that over to do the other side which is missing and we do the holes now we can use that we can use this here to um, we scan this into the computer and we you can use that to align all our holes so we've got a hole there hole there hole there we know the diameters of those. We've got an oblong square here, which we can shape, shape with um, inside Corel Draw. Once we get the shape, we have it all in um, hairline, and we can just transfer it across to make it a um, usable item for our laser cutter. Okay, we're in uh, Corel Draw, and uh, as you can see, the Corel laser, laser icons are up the top here, which is the control panel for your output from the Corel laser. I've set up a template, which is 400 by 300, 100, which is a work area of the um, 
laser cutting machine and I, in the corner I have a dot on each layer. So there's a mark layer, a cut layer and an engraving layer and as you can see there's a dot in there which is a 0.6 and that's what we use to align all our layers. So the first thing we're going to do is import our um, scanned image. Okay, I've got it set up here, so that's a PDF, so we're going to import that. Right, I place it on the, on the page. Now, this is going to be our template. So what we basically are going to use, we're going to get a circle. We're going to work out, I think it was about 33 millimetres. So in our diameter up here, we can go, let's set it at 33, tab 33. Now that will make that circle round. Hit enter. Now the circle is round and it's that size. While we're doing it, let's get it to a hairline, which we're going to use to cut later. Okay, now we'll bring this across and line it over top of here. And we're using the scanned image, so we can place that a bit better by just using the arrows. Arrow it down, arrow it across. So get it pretty close. Okay, that's it. So rather than redo all that setup again, I will now copy that image, the circle, and paste the circle. Now, it's now sitting on top of that other one. So let's kind of make it, because the holes are about 8 millimeters. So we're going to 8 millimeter, tab, 8 millimeter, tab. Now that's about the size of our holes over here, which we could be measured. We have a measurement. Okay, same thing that. Now we can scroll, scroll into there and move it around by the jog, jog it around with the um, arrow keys till we're happy with that. Okay. When we want to copy, because we've already got eight millimeter hole we, uh, circle, we're only going to copy it. So when we pull it, so we left and drag it. Now when we want to copy it, we just release, push it with the right button. If we let it go, it'll just it'll just shift it to that position. So we want to paste it to that position. So we right click. Now we have one here and one over here and one in the new position. We go over here. We move it to our position that we're happy with. Right. So that gives us, so when we scroll out, so this here is basically a square with round edges. So we basically will use a square or a rectangle. Let's put a rectangle on there. Okay, so we've placed our square on there. It's not the right size or anything, but we, we've got the basic square. If we go to the node arrow key or shape tool up here, we can click that. If we click it. Get, we can click it now. We can pull those corners out when we go into that. So, where we reckon around the diameter of the corners is about right. Okay, so that's probably about right. So, what we can do here, if we double click this one, we can then skew it. Okay, so now we're sort of starting to get the basic shape. So, we can rotate that with these arrows here. Oops, not that one. Now that, what we just moved then, so if we make a mistake, we just go back, hit the arrow button there, it returns it back. Okay, so with this here, we can then turn it round. Okay, so we second, we're on the second click it twice, and now it's turning. As you can see, it's not quite the right shape. So from there, we can adjust it. We just keep adjusting it till we get it right. Got to click on it and then we can bring it in a bit. Ah. That's basically the background moving, which we're using as our template. So we're going to do it again. Okay, we're back aligned up. We're now aligned up again. So we basically got it to that shape. Got to make sure we click on the right item so we're clicking on the uh, the outside of the square which is what we're manipulating so we're going to make it a little bit narrower it's probably got to go a little bit more it's getting close to half and half we just 
move it backwards and forwards until we get it to be where we want it to be. Just keep moving it, adjusting it, moving it, adjusting it. So it's too high, bring the top down. Too high, too low, there, bring it down again. So, as you can see, it's getting fairly close there. You can play around with that a little bit. So now we're going to save those. So what we basically can do, if we click on the background and delete it, we have that. Now, you should already have this all lined up before you get rid of your template. But I've already basically done that, so you can manipulate that around until you get the correct shape. This is our completed um, gasket. Now, if we scroll over that and select all of them, go up to Object, we can go into Group, and we can group all that objects. So now we can click on any one of those and move the whole four, four items. Otherwise, it would be only moving one. So we can move that around as one piece now. Okay, our second um, gasket was the dimensions we took. So it's also circles, mostly circles. So the first circle we did, let's make our, our hairline. The first circle we measured was the inside circle, which was 41.2. So 41.2, tab, 41.2, tab, now that is our inner circle. We've set it as a hairline. Now that's we have three rings. We've got the inner side diameter, the outer diameter, and we have the how far out the centre of the holes are for the two holes we have to put in there. So the easiest way is to copy and then paste. Now that's still on top of the same position, but the second is the outside diameter is 53.5. Put 53.5 up the top, 53.5, enter. Now we have, as you can see, we now have a, a circle there, which is a second circle. Now the third circle we want is the one we use to align our two smaller holes. Okay, so we now go again, copy. Oh, it's already set up a copy, so we just paste it. And we want to make this one 55, so we go to the top, 55, tab, 55, plus. To align the centre of our circle, we're going to use a guideline now. So to get a guideline, a horizontal guide, we're going to drag it from the ruler up the top, drag it to the middle there. And actually, it's hit the centre, so it should be okay. So on that, we have now to create the small bolts. So we're going to go paste again, and that's still that inner circle. So we're going to change it. They were eight millimeter hole. So eight point tab, eight point tab. So that's our eight millimeter holes. It's going to be on this outer circle here, lining up on the outer circle and lined up through the center line. So. This is what we're doing there. As you can see, we're not quite lined up, but you can use the center, X in the center there, to line it up. So we're going to move it across till it's lined up. So now it's on the right diameter and in the right position horizontally. Okay, we select it again, drag it to the other position roughly, right click to paste it, go in. Okay, we have to move it down a bit, have to move it across a bit. That should be pretty close. Now, we had a measurement of 13 millimetre, which is the outside. So we now can, we've already got that highlight, we can just copy that one and paste it. Our second hole on top of the other one is 8 mil. So we now want to change that to 13 mil, which is going to be the outside of our hole. So we're going to go 13, tab 13, enter. So that's going to be the outside of that. Now, if we go here, copy into break curve apart and we'll do the same thing with this one here object break curve apart now just click anywhere else on the screen now we come into the section we don't want we're going to click on that part there we're going to go delete and we're going to click on this part here and we're going to go delete so we'll we won't delete our guide at the moment because we've got to do the same on the other side. So when we can come over to our curve, 
change it to a point point line two point line we can go into here we then node we can drag from node to there and we do the same on that side we drag from that node to there now we do the same on the other side and once we finish that we've now got a cut roughly our cutout so we can then just go in and we go and get rid of that guideline here which is that one there delete and that's what it's going to look like we will then arrange them so once we arrange them so we can copy drag copy and right click and we can paste them in their position so we want six of these ones and four and, and two of these other ones so that's all ready to go we can now take that we can now take that across and in our um, normal corel draw we can actually go through and we can actually um, set it up so that we can cut it from our laser machine from there start with we will just um, cut a square to make sure we've got the right speed and the right power. I've set it up at 15 millimeters a second and 30% power. So when we go into the section for cutting, it comes up as 15 millimeters a second. Now we just start it. I've got it set up for the focal length being correct. Um, it's ready to go. It's going to cut the square starting. Now all we have to do is just confirm that that has cut through correctly. The easiest way often is to don't don't move anything. The easiest way often is don't move anything. Just get a little scalpel and just flick it. See, that's okay. So that's the right speed and power. This is our drawing all complete. We've got six of the, the um, bigger gaskets and two of the top gaskets. Transferred onto the screen, ready to go. Set up our height, etc. Um, ready to hit start. We're going to run at 15 millimeters a second and 30% power. And cut the whole lot out. Maybe a little bit much power, but it's a lot easier to get them out rather than trying to cut stuff after. She's coming to the end of the cut now. Um, it's onto the last um, gasket. Once it's cut, we'll pull one out and we'll try it and see how it looks compared to the um, manifold. But they looked pretty good before when I did the printout and just laid the manifold on top. So let's just finish this last one off. Pop this one out. Set him on top of there. Oh, that looks pretty close. Excellent. 